must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Thousands and the thousands of Africans and the many countries in Africa have conflicts. Notably, from Libya, Cameroon, Nigeria, Biafra, and the Boko Haram, to Democratic Republic of Congo, of where we have seen a resurgence of the past military and conflicts coming back in that country. Hundreds and hundreds of people have been displaced, killed, maimed, tortured, raped, several of them dying of hunger, starvation, and other natural causes. The fighting seem not to be ending. For the sake of Libya, the Libyan recognized international government is under siege in Tripoli from another faction recognized by Egypt, France, UAE, and other Afri uh, uh, countries. Whereas the one in Tripoli is recognized by the UN, it has been bombarded, it is has been strangulated and it, many millions of Libyans are dying of hunger, lack of water. The water system has been cut off. The bombardment goes on. In Democratic Republic of Congo, we've seen more of active rebel activities returning to the region after some silence has been observed. When we come to Cameroon, we see millions and millions of Amazonians slaughtered. Yet, when you come to Biafra, again millions and hundreds of millions and millions are worried, displaced, tortured by the Buhari regime. Yet again in the north, we see Boko Haram killing, maiming, abducting and burning down villages in the same Nigeria. When you cross over to Central African Republic, the same is the history that has littered Africa. While all these events are taking shape, Africa is silent. Africa is not making enough efforts to find a solution to what is causing the problems in Libya, in DRC, in Cameroon, in Nigeria, Biafra, and now you add in Khartoum, Sudan. As people die, the people of Africa have no answers, have no solutions. There is nothing to near to bring an end to the conflicts that have killed Africa. We seem to be new ones manufactured, old ones reignited, encouragement coming from external powers. One power that has been seen in the shadows of all these conflicts, especially the one of Libya, that has escalated in the Sahara region of Africa is France. When you come to the Democratic Republic of Congo, the same country is in the shadows. The war can be seen is France. When you come to Cameroon in the Amazonia, the one behind that has the key to bringing peace 
is France. Therefore, our question, and our question as Africans, why are we silent? Why are we not saying enough is enough of the wars? Thank you. All the way from Nairobi, the Republic of Kenya. Viewers, thank you very much for watching us. This is Diplomatic Leaks. Diplomatic Leaks is a show that we bring to the people of Africa. We de deliver it at your doorsteps at night. While you have just come back from work, you learn what the diplomats do and what they don't do behind the closed doors. The diplomatic leaks teaches us many things that Africa must understand, must know. Which direction are we going? What is happening to Africa today? We've been in the studio this evening to bring the most touching topic. The topic touches most Africans. One that touches us as East Africans in the East African community as neighbors of Sudan, South Sudan, sorry. We are touched by the type of violence that has taken place in South Sudan. We are touched by the number of refugees, infrastructure destroyed, humanitarian catastrophe. Therefore, we want people to listen to us. We have shouted for the last three years. And tonight, we shall add our voice together with my sister, Miriam Ogutu. Good evening, good evening Miriam. A very good evening to you, Dr. Ready to go? Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, let's go. And you know, South Sudan is very close to my heart for yes. some reason. <laughs> For very serious reason, Miriam is very reason. close. South Sudan is very close to, to my the heart. heart. Oh, the heart is very close. And it's very difficult to get something close to my heart. But yes. this one is very close. Very close to South Sudan. Mm -hmm. I am very near it. <laughs> and I have been in it. I have been there. We have resolved our conflict of northern Uganda through the help of President Salva Ki. We want to thank you for what you did for us to resolve the problems that Northern Uganda had. We had peace, and the peace returned to our country through the efforts of Dr. Yakmacha, President Salva Ki, President Kisano, Dr. Wakana Rugunda, President Yoel Gaguta Museveni, the African Union, the IGAD, the EU ambassadors, especially the British ambassador who allowed me and asked me to take part personally because I'd refused 
to get involved in the politics of the market politics of our country. I want to thank all of you for having helped us. But today, the clock seems to have turned upside down. It is gone back to Juba. Miriam, this country, 12 of about 14 days to go, is only, it? Only 14 days to go. When, when, uh, wait, the clock wait. seemed to be ticking. We thought six months was very far away. Now it's no. 14 days to go. When Dr. Riyakama just said, we shall be there in November, it was September, it was sometime in June. We have postponed so many times that the international community now says it is over. And the resolutions are now being drafted. Very serious resolution. I was telling you a few days ago, my fellow South Sudanese and the comrades Africans, those watching me in this studio every time, that this television makes a difference. We bring things that matter to the world. I said, if we don't move fast, International community will make us move faster. There is a hidden draft that is coming. If we don't square this by next month on 12th, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We are done. Since Quisha finished. Let's not go that route. Because that route never bring will never bring peace. Let me go slowly and see the conflict where it started. In 2013, a war broke out between Dr. Riyakamacha, who was the then vice president of South Sudan, and Salva Ki. President Salva Ki is the president, remains the president, who had the instruments of leading South Sudan recognized by international community, the African Union, European Union, United Nations. He remains the president of South Sudan to date. Dr. Riyak Macha was the vice president of South Sudan. The constitutional and the power brokerage that takes place in situations where liberation organizations have just returned home, played a part in the conflict that we see today. I want to reason like a person who knows what conflicts are. The power struggles, the finicity, the sharing of the resources equitably, the constitutional mechanisms, of a country, how to balance the new constitution, the old constitution, modernization, reforming the constitution, making perestorica within the constitution, created what we could call a center breaking every night, every moment that Sudan lived. In our diplomatic leaks, you look at what exactly triggered the war. You will find that the factors that I've just mentioned mostly took part. We are part and parcel of the, the trigger machinery, ethnicity, corruption, power hungry, egoism. Exactly. Especially that. <laughs> there is a lot of egoism. Especially that. In liberation movements. That's why Kony killed OT. In any agreeable groups, usually commanders don't survive. UNITA, Savimbi never survived. Congo, Kabila never survived. Look at them. The only commander who survived, Rijema never survived. Bunyenyezi never survived. Those are my commanders, OBs. All the boys were together in the same schools. Same schools, same camps, some of them. They never survived. 
General Garang never survived. Liberation organizations have a tendency of clearing away. Samora Marshall never survived. Apparently in Africa, nobody ever talks about what really happened to Samora Marshall. But I'm going to be starting to talk about it. To expose the ugly face of imperialism that destroyed and killed Africa. What happened to the plane of Samara Marshall? What really took place? So liberation organizations always collapse at the hour when you are about to take power. Oh, you have taken power. Oh, you want to change. Oh, you want to take over yourself, not to change for your betterment of the people, but for the betterment of the ego. Viewers, wherever you were, South Sudan was plugged, plugged into this situation by some of those factors I have mentioned. If you think there is another factor, add it to what I have said. South Sudan and the South Sudanese, our brothers. The humanitarian catastrophe that has taken toll since 2013 to date lingers in our minds, destroys our minds, our memory is erased as soon as you see some pictures somewhere. But as soon as it is erased, it comes back of the suffering of the people of South Sudan. And I hope the, the people in the production team will bring some of these pictures in the background as we speak, if it is possible. Today, this is what we want to know. Why we have not been able to close and cross over the bridge. South Sudan is a country where River Nile cuts through. If we are on this side, can we cross over to the other side? It appears the bridge is also banned, or is there hope that uh, there could be a makeshift bridge that can ha have South Sudanese cross the other side? I think, I think the bridge is needed. Mm -hmm. Do we need the PBI in South Sudan? Yes. Mm -hmm. The redemption strategy in South Sudan is important. And every resolution, every talk, every peace talks, IGAD, whatever UN, they are talking about it. How do you accomplish everlasting peace in South Sudan? We want to take this opportunity to thank President Salvaki for remaining steadfast in the search for peace. We equally want to take this opportunity to tell Dr. Yakamacha as a man who picked guns, as a man who claims, not me, but he claims mm -hmm. he was provoked, he was going to be killed, he had to defend himself. But time has passed for either you were going to defend yourself or you are the defender. Time has passed. Am I clear on that one? Either you are defending yourself Oh, you are the defender. What is coming next in the 14 days as the world watches? Countries have secretly drafted the resolutions. All these revolutions, when you read them towards the end, and I believe Miriam will read some of them. Yes, later do. on when they, yes. I finish this one. Yes, we do have the resolution, but the U.S. The, mm -hmm. You see... They come to what this man with his mouth, this one here, has been saying, whom you call all names. Thank you. I've been telling you. I've been telling my friends in South Sudan that there's a country that has drafted a silent resolution. I've been telling people, don't tell Rainbagger. Because Rainbagger is a very dangerous man. These are diplomatic leaks. And we must tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Mr. Reinberger took, Raira, look, took the presidency of Kenya plus other four Kenyans to the International Criminal Court. It would be a very bad choice. 
Your Excellency Dr. Geno Salvaki Mayad to appoint Rainberger as your lobbyist because he will lobby for you to be in any tribunal, whichever tribunal. There, he took us to the ICC in Kenya. He's a man I cannot meet and agree. Although God says meet and agree. If he's at a function, I run away. Because I oppose the ICC syndrome on this African continent. It was a mistake, therefore, for people not to listen. And they better, they better listen now. Because the clock is ticking so fast. If you think you are safe, you haven't seen it yet. Resolutions, two countries. Now one country has come out clear. The United States of America. But there's another country that is that did the resolution. That's where I picked it from. And I watch my eyes. I picked it from there. How I picked it, don't ask me. Oh yeah. It has drafted it well. It usually doesn't go with the type of pomp that the French use when they are about to conquer an empire. This country is modest. And it always comes in quietly. Which country is this? And that country is giving you signals. Mm -hmm. Is this the one that... Uh, I don't know. I Let's go slowly. <laughs> don't spoil the proof. Yes. South Sudan is fragile. Peace is faltering with only 14 days. If it falters within the 14 days, before the country's president and armed opposition leader form a coalition government and begin a long recovery for a five-year-old civil war. One country in Europe called United Kingdom, through its Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Commonwealth, on 18th of October, issued a foreign and a commonwealth advised that all South Sudan, all British nationals, who are in South Sudan, whether yellow, white, black, brown, and you are British national, to move towards the airport, find the safe exit, and leave South Sudan. Well, you can still do so. You can do so. Levels of intercommunal violence, citing, this is Britain, and I'm quoting what they say. They say the levels of intercommunal violence remain high across the country, and there are sporadic reports of fighting between armed groups in certain areas. The adversary wrote, it encourages Britons in South Sudan to live if it is safe to do so. And in the morning we asked this question, Dr. Matsanga, what has the British seen that uh, we have not seen yet? What are they seeing the aftermath of our post uh, the, 12th, the, the deadline of the 12th November that the rest of us may not have been able to catch a, a glimpse of? What do they know that we don't know? I am not part of the mm -hmm. people who would advise Africans not to go to United States of America mm -hmm. because there is shooting in the nightclubs. In Las Vegas, yeah. In Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I would encourage, we have never put a ban, a travel ban, on Americans. But I think time is coming when Africa should turn a travel ban on some people. I don't see why we should give America a visa for $50. If I were Minister of Tourism and Foreign Affairs of Kenya, the Kenyan visa would be got for $500. If you want to come to see Kenya, you pay $500. Because there is more to see in Kenya than it is to see in America. In America, you see cement, balcons, hive buildings. In Kenya, you see animals 
that are very rare. So I would tax people. And I'm just asking President Uru Kenyatta and others to raise the taxation. I'm asking Zimbabwe to raise the visa for any American going to Zimbabwe to a thousand bob per visa. A thousand dollars per person to enter Zimbabwe. Why do you demonize Zimbabwe and then come back and tell them that you are coming to see the animal? Why do you want to see the animal? You hate the people, then you want to go and see the animals. Hello, Africa, wake up. It's a wake up call for Africa to know. People are saying, what do we do with sanctions? We have mounted gorillas in Uganda. 2,000 Ugandans have been put on sanction list. Why can't we also retaliate? For every American stepping in Kampala and Entebbe, $2,000 per visa. They will pay. I think they might consider that having seen Yes, that. I am now. I, you see, having seen President Museveni I'm was, just, was warming up to Putin last week. I am, America might consider. Yes, I am now just <laughs> telling <laughs> President Museveni, yes. give me this slot of Minister of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. I will do very well. Mm -hmm. I will bring that rule, did law, did in, yes, in the Parliament of Republic of Uganda mm -hmm. and ask Ugandans to give a visa, $2,000 per person who wants to come and see Maction Falls Park. They are very rare. If you don't want, stay. Create the mountain there, oh, Maction Falls. Time has come for Africa to wake up and talk with passion, with patriotism like Kenyerere, Kuruma, Sekutore, Siadibare, these were the people who used to talk and Africa could say, oh my God. Jomo Kenyatta, Oboti. These guys spoke with strength, with unity or purpose. Today in Africa we speak scattered like animals. The same animals that the Americans come to see. This conflict of South Sudan is a result of the same people. John, George Kurune and Pedagast, those are my next target in Africa. They organize themselves into NGOs that go on looking for faults among African countries. They create coups. They pay opposition to overthrow governments in Africa. They support rebel groups. And then they turn around to say there is a humanitarian catastrophe. When you are the one who created it. Why are you creating a humanitarian catastrophe around the Great Lakes region? We are very quiet, silent people. We have lived with the Somalis. Today somebody has paid Somalia to go to the International Court of Justice to accuse us. To accuse Kenyans, are you not creating a conflict? You who pays Somalia, which has not money and a toilet, they haven't built toilets yet. Because the toilets were all finished by the Americans in 1991. El Shabaab is finishing some of the toilets, killing everybody. Somalia has not reached, doesn't even have money. But somebody is paying for them to accuse Kenya. Don't you think there's someone who should be responsible? South Sudan could not have gone the route. Just gone. Instigators, outsiders, darker forces, looking for the black gold, looking for oil, looking for resources. Total oil. Hello? Did the Africans listen? When Total Oil said, we have been looking for oil in South Sudan. Unfortunately, we did not get this oil. And we have left. We have packed our goods to go away because we didn't receive what we wanted. After how long? How, what did the Total Oil, which side was Total Oil in the conflict? 
and total oil packed its goods crossed over Ka Pakwachi Bridge with their um, um, things and came to Uganda. In Uganda, they found the Chinese were already in the saddle. Do you know that our oil has been sold before we even know how much it is? Mm -hmm. That's another conflict in waiting. They crossed over to Kenya and asked, oh, we are going to build you some lapset. But first of all, give us Ngamia 1, Ngamia 2, or Ngamia 3, or 4, or invent a Ngamia 20. Kenya said, oh my God, we don't have it. They crossed over to Mogadishu, found a man called Faramijo, a man who has a British, uh, American passport, weighing it, waving it, to whoever way comes, is like a wind event. Whoever arrives in Mogadishu, welcome. Then go, take go, Kata coming. <laughs> no way coming. <laughs> America now open, wind event. We don't have nationalists anymore. We have wind event presidents that Africa has. In South Sudan, the story grew from worse, bad to worse, worse to dangerous proportions where the clock is ticking. I overhand you, hand you over, Miriam. Over for your facts. All right. I know, and, and the train is on the roll already. And you mentioned the Century Report. And just I'll read uh, maybe just a few lines from their executive summary there. And the starting of that, they say that the men who liberated South Sudan proceeded to hijack the country's uh, fledging governing institutions, looting its resources, and launched a war in 2013 that has cost hundreds of thousands of lives and displaced millions of people. So this is the start of, of the Central Report, and uh, this is what they're saying. Uh, this is what we're supposed to remember from, from last week. Yes. So, yeah, so they're saying the people who liberated South Sudan came along again and hijacked uh, the country's fledging governing institutions. Exactly. So the, so the savior has become the abuser now. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, 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 first of all, but what they, I, I, I disagree with George Clooney mm -hmm. and the pedagogist of the Central. You know why? They don't have anything to tell me. They can only tell Americans who have never gone to school. But a man like me who has gone to school, who can teach them political science, ask them, what is it? Who gave? Who created that conflict? It is them. It's Kuruni. It's the pedagogist. Pedagogist has been writing about Bashir in Khartoum. Pedagogist has been paying demonstrators in Khartoum. Pedagas has been writing and George Clooney wrote to put more sanctions on the people of Khartoum. And what they have done is to extend themselves with another project called Enough, which writes very bad reports about the area of Sudan or Greater Sudan as it is. So for them to say the men who took over the country, who liberated, they are also the factors. Can we say the factors that made South Sudan to be independent turned around through George Kurune and the Pedagas to dismember the same nation. <laughs> and it's very interesting because, as you said, we have the U.S. Senate re resolution on South Sudan that was made last week uh, on Tuesday. That is the 22nd of October. And uh, it was such a, long, uh, such a long resolution, so I just... Uh, I, I, took a few part of that. And uh, interesting, it, it appears as though the report by Sentry uh, seems to have been captured here in one of the resolution. As you see here, uh, they're saying that uh, the Secretary uh, of the Treasury should also use best efforts to prevent, detect, investigate, and mitigate um, money laundering activities, which of course we know uh, George Clooney's uh, you know, enough project uh, deals with uh, apparently money la laundering uh, problems. And that is a huge thing they mentioned in regards to uh, South Sudan, and uh, that the United States government should support implementation and subsequent renewal of the United Nations Security Council arms embargo in South Sudan to prevent continued illicit acquisition of arms and military equipment. And I think they revised that. I think they, they put another embargo uh, sometimes earlier this year uh, on South Sudan. So we see the report on Central, it has been captured there, uh, the money laundry part. Let me, let me, let me 
money come down? And who, who, where does the money, where is the money laundered? I want George Kurune to tell me who in Sudan laundered money, where? George Soros building in New York is next to Trump. President. Yes, mm. that is that is so-called president of America. Because I don't recognize him. He doesn't recognize us as Africans. Mm. I don't think I recognize him as a president. I'm also educated. In fact, I, can, I write better English than he does. I don't think he knows how to construct the sentences. Mm -hmm. But let's be very honest. Yeah, it's true. Some of these people, things are written for them. Yeah, Trump can't. Write, yes, so we've seen that. Trump can't write, can't <laughs> think. It, it, it always, he's always stealing data. This is the president of a first world stealing data. You know? Superpower. And there are no Africans talking about his theft. A superpower stealing data somewhere to win an election. Then you come to Africa, you come to Zimbabwe and they say the election was not democratic. Too stupid. To hell. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I am not a diplomat. I am an African like a Nyerere. In fact, if you see, you hear my voice, it's more or less like a Nyerere. Put on Nyerere voice and pull, look at my voice. We are more or less maybe Nyerere mm -hmm. passed through my village. <laughs> but you were in Tanzania. At first yes, so you, you I was have... in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem. It, yes. I know Tanzania well. Yes. He must have, you know, inspired you. Inspired me, my blood, and my generation. Let me ask the truth. The money is laundered to where? Mr. George Soros launders money. Show me one warrant of arrest that George Soros has been put on, except the one in Russia and Hungary. And Hungary, where he's, he's come from. Yes, is Hungary. the rest is in the U.S. He's seated near Mr. Trump Tower. He's calling African leaders to come. He's calling Chamisa. Come, come, baby. Come. He's calling Bob Wine. Come, come, baby. He's calling Bessie. Come, come, baby. He's calling someone here. I don't want to mention because now we're in shaky hand, handshake. Yes, I will leave that. Baba used to be called Yogi Yogi Soro Kofi Annan. Baba now is on the right route. He, we are going to Canaan. We are going to Canaan. Because Muse Raira Odinga saw that enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Enough project. You cannot sit there and a, a man who has loaned that money is calling you to pay you and is calling you to pay to go and kill your fellow Africans. George Soros now, if you are issuing warrants against Africans, why don't you issue a warrant against George Soros? Why do you issue a warrant against a, a Zimbabwean minister who is doing his job and you fail to issue a warrant against George Soros who is seated near Trump's tower? And Trump and George Soros, they don't see eye to eye. But it's yet they allow Mr. George Soros to dismember Africa. Where are we sitting? Where are we sitting? And doctor, uh, just, just an excerpt uh, from that, and then uh, it will uh, tie it to... Uh, you, you've been saying there's, there is a resolution that has been prepared and is lying somewhere. So in this report here from the U.S. Senate resolution, uh, point number six, when you go towards the end there, it says that uh, that the Secretary of State, in conjunction uh, with the Secretary of Treasury, uh, should continue to monitor human rights abuse and corruption in South, Afri in South Sudan and take decisive action using authorities granted under the Global uh, Martinsky Human Rights Accountability Act. And of course, um, they're like that. But when you see, they start bringing the issues of human rights, which you know has been abused <laughs> in South Sudan. Is a charge sheet towards closer to ICC or yes. somewhere there? Yes. Yeah, they're making a case. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is... His Excellency, uh, His Excellency General Salvaki Mayad, Mr. President, you are my president. You, I respect you. A, you respect you. Keep the agreement open. 
If people don't turn up on 12, tell the world the truth. If Mr. Riyak Macha, I'm going to, to look for him. I will look for Dr. Riyak Macha because I have, not, I have not forgotten Dr. Riyak Macha forcing me to go on a helicopter to go and look for coin. Now I'm also going to go to Khartoum to tell him, let's go. And I'm willing to travel on that flight to arrive in Juba with him. Because he made me have peace in Uganda. I'm proud. Really? We, are, we are proud Ugandans because Dr. Riyak Macha was part of the process. Yes, was part of the process. Your Excellency Dr. Riyak Macha Tenny, book me a flight on that flight. If not, I'm going to talk to General Hamed Daglo, my friend for many years. I'm going to tell him to get me a seat. I will be coming if he fears to go. Because this guy used to force me to go on. You know you are going to see Kony, who is a, a killer. And he says, go. Even when Kony had killed every commander, he threw me in the des in the forest to die. Now time, your turn. Your turn, Dr. Yakamacha. Your turn. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Pull up the socks and come. <laughs> Did you just say Dr. Bashar to book your flight? You know, he's, he's, under, he put, he's under house arrest. The debit card may not be working. <laughs> no, we, Ahmed. Dr. General Hamed Duklo will be by, by In fact, I'll, I'll make a call tomorrow to make sure that I am part of that delegation. Mm -hmm. So encourage Dr. Yakamacha that yeah. 12, nothing 12, will happen. You need friends. Mm -hmm. I am one of those mm -hmm. willing to travel on that plane to land in Juba. Especially friends to South Sudanese. Yes. The, the, who are the bigger picture here. Yes. People who are suffering there in South Sudan. So one of our viewers here, Galdino Sebet, thank you so much for writing to us. You're saying the tragedy of South Sudan is the actual tragedy of Africa. Eager drugs it's it not safe. The innocent civil population, but to serve the very leadership that dragged us to this mayhem. As the clock ticks to November 12th, uh, the symptoms are crystallized. Uh, the agreement is never implemented and expect the tragedy to repeat itself. We know the toothless of the international community, including the local ones, AUU uh, and IGAD and so on, keep watching the catastrophic war degrading South Sudanese. So he's saying there has not been a commitment, especially in these regional bodies like IGAD or international bodies like United uh, Nations and even AU. AU has, I, I can't even bring AU into this conversation, but uh, you know, they're saying that uh, somehow these people just sit there and watch uh, South Sudan, uh, this catastrophe happen. And uh, he seems not to be having a lot of faith uh, that at uh, 12th November, come 12th November, 14 days from now, there will be something substantive in, in terms of, you know, having this uh, unity government uh, starting to be implemented. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, <laughs> A very good somebody has written here, Amira Ban. South Sudan belongs to South Sudanese, not to react, react and oh. live alone. Okay. We South Sudans are fed up of the so called leaders, all of them. Exactly. Abraham Chon Long Deng, I'm watching from Australia. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. From down under, I know you have woken up very early in the morning. Or is yet to go to bed? He, no, no. It's they good. have already left to bed. Mm -hmm. They are going to work. But thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That is why we are crying here. We are still on this job until there is peace. All what we are saying today is there must be respect. That Dr. Yak Macha respect Salva Ki. Salva Ki is the president of Republic of South Sudan. Respect must be there to accord ourselves a peaceful transition. The rest can come later. This is what Dr. Yakamacha used to tell me. There's a time when I refused to greet President Museven to shake his hand. Dr. Yakamacha told me, no. Dr. Matsanga, shake Museven's hand now. If you don't shake, you will not come on the plane. So I am also appealing now to Dr. Yakamacha to respect that there is, some, there is a president mm -hmm. called Salva Ki. You know, in, in the dialogue, 
If you don't do that, you can't have peace. That's why it breaks all the time. One person has to eat a pie for the sake of this nation, for the sake of this country, for the sake of the great people of South Sudan, the beautiful color of Africa, the beautiful flowers that walk in the deserts, around the deserts of this nation, between the Karahari and the Sarah, Sahara deserts. There are beautiful flowers in Sudan. The South Sudan, the people that yearn for freedom need it now. The war must end. We have nothing else to add. We only want the war ended such that the people can do what they want to do. People, children can go back to school. People can go back to their daily activities. Semblance of democracy can return. That's all we're asking. We don't have the means to do so. Had we got the means to force everybody to get the peace, mm -hmm. we would have used it. But what you just read there from one of our viewers, she, I don't know if it is a he or she, and even he, he has this, the, the laughing emoji there, Mr. I, mean, I don't know, Amel Abun there saying that uh, actually South Sudanese are fed up with the both leaders. Is it that now some part of South Sudanese have become, they, they realize uh, these people don't even have them in mind while they negotiate some of these things? A third force mm -hmm. could grow. And now that is the... You have brought in something I was coming to. That captured my attention. Yes. There. Thank a you. third force yes. could grow in South Sudan. And it is being manufactured by the same powers. The same powers. And my brothers, my bigger brothers, uh, Dr. Yakamachi and President Salvaki, watch this. You could have a third force growing in the middle. Well organized. If you don't get this agreement working, that third force could be more, more lethal to both of you. So he has to watch out. You saw what they did in Angola after the death of Savimbi. You saw what happened to Renamo. After Renamo signed an agreement, another force grew up that never liked the agreement. That hates both the Kama and the Chisano. And that force has been growing until today. That force exists in the elections of Mozambique. Have you learned something today? Uh, okay, you, you've mixed Angola and Mozambique. So. <laughs> in Angola, yes. after the death of Savimbi, mm -hmm. assassinated having left Kampala mm -hmm. after selling diamonds to okay. Mr. X in Kampala. He was in, uh, in yeah, I don't want to say much. Okay. We left all the way through DRC Congo with a satellite phone. He was gunned down by Angolan MPLA forces. Savimbi Unita never became the same Unita that could fight a war beyond that. Who was doing that? Who owns the satellite? Who man mans the satellite systems? Who mans the, these phones? It's only one country in the world that mans those phones. So watch for that country. Because when I talk about this country, everybody wants to slaughter me. And of but the satellite phones are manned by only one country in the world. The world. And, and then that country directed where Mr. Savimbi was going. Where is Mr. Savimbi? He's gone. Another force grew up in UNITA that never wanted to know anything but only to say let's go and do whatever we want. And earlier this year they were able to, to be given the remains of his body and yes. they accorded him a decent sentence. So it is, you have to be careful when you are being used by these countries. They could, be, they could and the leaders in both in Juba mm -hmm. and Khartoum, those watching Riyaka's side and Salva Key his Excellency Salva Kiyan, His Excellency Dr. Riyak Macha, mm -hmm. must watch this. There might be a third force being grown up, mm -hmm. which could actually come to torpedo whatever you are who, saying. Who has had enough of, of both of the sides and just wants to come in and uh, maybe speak on behalf of the people who are who are tired of you know the two of them. This, this is a diplomatic leak. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, we talk things that touch diplomats. So if you're a diplomat, don't get worried. We don't only take, talk things. We don't reveal some of the top things. But we leak, which is supposed to be leaked. Like uh, now, we have leaked this resolution of the United Nations of America. America is pushing for that thing. But there is a country that has hidden a draft. They have been doing it for the last six months. They believe that once there is a hybrid court and the names are read out, the agreement will be signed faster than lightning. Yes, do, you, do you agree? Yes, indeed. And for our viewers out there who perhaps may not be very familiar with this South Sudanese uh, you know, situation, we talk about it here. So if you're one of our ardent viewers, so perhaps you know, even if you're not, you don't come from South Sudan. But uh, the reason why this is very important for us to keep talking about is because uh, these, uh, the, this, the numbers are staggering of the people who have been affected by this uh, war. And uh, since the onset of the civil war in South Sudan in December 2013, nearly 400,000 South Sudanese citizens are estimated have been killed. Uh, 1.9 Nine million have been internally displaced and 2.3 million have fled the country and registered as refugees across uh, the globe. And also right now, the United Nations reports that over 6.3 million people, more than half the population, were classified as severely food insecure at the peak of the season in 2019. So these kind of figures is what is making us, and we have to continue talking about South Sudan. Because these are not just statistics, these are people. There you are. Yes. Didn't I tell you? Repeat the figure and I will see. <laughs> Just repeat the figure. Because I'm, Matanga has been talking and the people hated me. Mm -hmm. At first, the Sudanese government, South Sudanese government, thought I was against. I'm not against. Bo both Salva Key, President Salva Key, helped to bring peace in my own country. I ate his food for four years. So we are invested. Yes. I should help him to have peace in his country. I ate food As when Juba was no Juba in the tents. Mm -hmm. I ate food in Juba Ra, mm -hmm. Juba Bridge. I got peace in my country. President Museveni had refused anything to do with peace. President Salva Kiyi said, no, we must have peace. Your Excellency, I want to thank you. Don't give up. Don't give up. These guys are coming. They have prepared a resolution against you. Get this peace process going. The world needs peace. Dr. Yak Maja, wherever you are, I'm prepared to come and go with you on the plane to arrive in Juba that day. I'm your friend. After all, you took me to a place where I never wanted to go. And here I am. I said one day I will help you. I'm here to help you, Your Excellency, Dr. Yakmacha, to realize the dream so that the United Nations Security Council does not catch you. I don't want to go to those courts every time like I did on Kenyan people. I don't want to cry tears for the suffering of the people that are in the bushes that are, have never gone to school. No medicine, no schools, no food. Come up, man. Help Africa to come up. Stand up. Come. Sign this agreement. Let it go. The rest we can sort out. It is not a pattern that we can see imperialism overrunning us. But imperialism that runs us and creates fault lines is the type of imperialism we should forgive ourselves never to enter into pact. It is therefore my humble request to my elders, President Salva Ki and Dr. Yakamacha, the time takes the clock is ticking. South Sudan needs peace. There is nothing more than peace. The people have suffered enough. Carry down and sign. Implement what Igade has done. I am your brother. You helped us to make peace. 
Some of us had never talked to Museven for over 30 years. 26 years, actually, to be exact. But we talked to him that day. We made the peace. Go ye, come out. There's nothing difficult in making peace as South Sudanese. South Sudan needs peace now. Now. Forget about Kurune. Forget about the pedagast. These are parasites that watch people die, then make reports worth eating more money from George Soros. Hallelujah. The Pope has kissed both of you. The Pope kissed both of you. Who else can bring you down to this peaceful resolution of this conflict? Mm -hmm. Who else? We have done our business. We have done our role. We have pleaded with the world that there be peace. The people want peace. Sudan South Sudan wants peace. The region wants peace. This resolution here of the Americans mm -hmm. is dangerous resolution. It's a very dangerous resolution, and it has all the facts that you can see how it's it's very how it has been done. It, they're gearing towards a certain direction. So, I think. Uh, the courts might not be the, the best thing for South Sudan right now. That will, will tamper with the already very, uh, you know, very, very delicate peace process there should, should it come to that. And we're hoping it does not come to that. And when you look at the statistics, this is from the U.S. Senate resolution that I just read. The people who have been affected, uh, people who are suffering there, who are, uh, you know, are facing starvation, the kids who are malnourished, they're building a case towards a certain direction. So I, I hope that these leaders are seeing. They don't see when you are in rebel activities, at times you don't see. The eyes become blind. <laughs> I can see it is touching you. <laughs> I told you South Sudan is very close. Yes. <laughs> for, some, for some reason. South Sudan <laughs> is very close. Let's have a breather. <laughs> when we return, diplomatic leaks will come up with a few areas in Africa yes. where we feel we should tell you what is happening. Let's take a breather so that Miriam and I can hold our tears back. Can recollect ourselves. Recollect ourselves. Seem to have Miriam <laughs> is touched. I am touched. All right. But make peace a priority. Time is ticking. The clock ticks towards South Sudan. Thank you. I want to call upon the people of Abazonia today. Wherever you are in the diaspora, in Abazonia itself, that in a struggle you are bound to have divisions. But divisions should not divert you from the main focus, the main challenge. We have struggled to expose the happenings, the human rights abuses in Abazonia. The army has killed hundreds and hundreds of thousands burnt houses of people, internet was cut off, schools were closed, dispensaries, hospitals were burnt down. Abazonians should not be intimidated by Paul Robia. It is not upon the leaders of Abazonia because I am not from Abazonia. But I played a pivotal role in making sure that I loud out the voices, I put out the call, I call upon AU, EU, United Nations, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International. Many of them have listened to some of the things that I say here, and they have come at last. America, United States of America, is slowly, slowly moving towards giving the Abazonian people the dignity they deserve. I therefore call upon the leaders and the leadership of the Abazonian people to unite for a purpose. The unit of purpose is paramount as opposed to this unity, which has nothing but only produces ego that we have seen in South Sudan. What has killed South Sudan is not because they don't have the money, the minerals, 
the resources is equal between Riyakamacha and the Salvaki. We would not like to see that ego come to the people of Abazonia. The leadership of Abazonia. I call upon Samuel Sako, Akanga, Milan, and Eko to unite and talk with one voice on the international scene that will bring about the peace, the tranquility that you yearn for since 1961 when the resolution 1608 was abandoned by the United Nations General Assembly and Abazonia was annexed by the Cameroon government by then. I call upon you, my brothers, to pick up the unity call and free your people without disintegration. Thank you. Welcome back to Punchline Africa Diplomatic Leaks, the show in Africa that tells it all. We thank all the people of South Sudan who have come in right now in huge numbers. We can see you, we feel you, wherever you are, we have, we have just brought what is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. That shows the interest that you have in this topic. But we want to thank you. We want to take this opportunity as we conclude. To remind you of the facts, the staring facts, the facts that are there right now. Fact number one, it is believed that over 400,000 people mm -hmm. perished, lost their lives. Mm -hmm. Miriam? And uh, 1.9 million have been internally displaced and also 2.3 have fled the country and registered as refugees across the world. Most of these refugees are in Uganda, Kenya, and the rest of African countries. Egypt, yes. And Egypt. Mm -hmm. And elsewhere in Africa, we call upon the people of Africa, wherever they are, to give the South Sudanese the decent life, the, the life, the decent life that a human being wants. Don't mistreat them mm -hmm. because there is war in their country. It could be your, your country next. Mm -hmm. So we call upon you to treat them with a lot of decency and the modest. Give it, accord them all the credibility that they deserve Treated as human beings. With dignity, period. Yes. Right? Because with all these crazy leaders we have in Africa, we don't know where the world will be next. To These headlining uh, positions we see our leaders take sometimes and the lack of uh, putting the country first that a lot of our leaders, uh, you know, lack. You know, Africa, we just live, I think, by the grace of God. <laughs> Over 6.3 yeah. million people. Mm -hmm are severely under food, short, food shortage. Mm -hmm. We call upon the international community to come not to give up, not to, to, dis, to despair, mm -hmm. not to give up about South Sudan. Continue to contribute the little that you can, mm -hmm. $1, $2, to aid agencies mm -hmm. that are helping in humanitarian catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Continue to help the government of South Sudan in realizing the potential to be able to coordinate these activities, support the government which is in power there to be able to sustain humanitarian outlets, mm -hmm. open up the routes for people to receive this food. Mm -hmm. But the world over, do something, $1, $2, to any humanitarian organization that is supporting the people of South That's Sudan. Right. And yes, indeed, we're still talking about the food shortage there. It is, uh, uh, say that acute malnourishment is projected to rise to 1.3 million in early 2020. So early 2020 is just like what, two months away. Yes. So 1.3 million people are, will be facing malnourishment and starvation uh, come early. So they're already doom and, and uh, you know, darkness, you know, even projected for the next year. Countries are sitting down projecting their budgets for the next year, but look at what is being projected for South Sudan for early uh, January. It's very sad. It's a sad story. 690 children are under, uh, they, uh, uh, they need education. 690. They have no access. Can you believe that? 690,000 children have no access. Who will rebuild South Sudan? We need to have these children go to school, people. 112 humanitarian aid workers have been killed since the start of the war in 2013. Mm -hmm. And that is a very bad indicting mm -hmm. 
indictment to the leadership of, of both the rebels mm -hmm. and the government. Mm -hmm. So, our brothers, wherever you were, wherever you were, put South Sudan in prayers. Put the prayers that God hear. Mm -hmm. Let South Sudan be a country where God comes, <laughs> sheds tears, and drops the tears. And something also very worrying, Doctor, there, something here we should not uh, overlook, is that 25% of all reported cases of sexual abuse, uh, uh, sexual violence are towards children, 25% of these cases that have been reported. The children are ab abused sexually, which is a very worrying phenomenon in the world. And these are the future generation of our countries that we have. Whereas the United Nations Security Council adopted the resolution 2471 on May 30th, 2019, to the extent of sanctions against South Sudan and the new renewed the provision of supply sale of arms. We should encourage instead of selling more arms, you sell, give more aid to the government, support to the government of President Salva Ki in order for President Salva Ki to be able to sustain and make the government move, work, so that aid and other things reach the destination that they are supposed to go. Because even if right now, of course, uh, there have been calls for the uh, new leadership and all, that cannot happen until the country is stable enough. There has to be some stability so that even the country can go to an election. So uh, whoever is there right now who is the president, Salva Kiir, I think, if he can, he can receive all the support uh, that the world can give to him. I don't know which other support he, he, he needs because I think people have been very supportive of South Sudan and South Sudanese people. Uh, but uh, we need that stability so that we can even have a transition and a proper election in South Sudan, which has not happened uh, since uh, the country got it, its independence in 2011. Let's ask the leaders of South Sudan to put egoistic advances. Mm -hmm. Put the nation first. Mm -hmm. Leave ego mm -hmm. behind. Yes, very well. Even uh, I think that was echoed with one of our leaders here who said that uh, is the problem uh, because uh, these people really don't care much about uh, the country. All they have there is just uh, uh, things that massage their egos. Uh, the Pope kissed their feet as if that was not enough, like surely. Dr. David, the conflict in South Sudan is fueling, being fueled by EGAD because they choose to take side rather than pressurizing warring parties. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you mo no more. There are some members of IGAD that have actually fueled the conflict. We do warn them. We do ask the members to stick to the point, the mandate of IGAD, or bringing peace, other than taking sides in the conflict of South Sudan. Yes. Thank you very much, Chine Roach. Uh, uh, no. Cheer. Thank you very much, Bolo Neck. Yes. Bolo Riek. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for that comment. Mm -hmm. And then we have Tut Kul Kuli Church uh, yes. Kui says Kui whole South Sudan is flooding now. And nobody's talking about no it. No one's talking. And Thank you very yes. much for telling us, but we are appealing to the humanitarian avenues. So that is another crisis now. That's another crisis that is added on the conflict Already. of South Sudan. Yes. May God come and one day hold the hand that there be peace such that the bridges are built. And uh, Lily uh, Lawrence here, Morbe, thank you so much that you've been writing to us. Please continue writing, and we appreciate uh, you uh, engaging with us and you're saying we will never have genuine peace if we don't genuinely repent of the diseases such as tribalism, hatred, positions, uh, hunger, and revenge. So this this is just a recipe of what is aiding a lot of African countries. Yes. The hatred. And the, the hatred. Mm -hmm. and the the hip hatred. Mm -hmm. Like the one in Kenya since 1992. Mm -hmm. Hatred is heaped. You have seen what the senator of Kericho has said? Today. Yes. This young man of Kericho mm -hmm. in Kenya, he has said something very dangerous. And I don't think the authorities will leave him. Maybe he needs to repent, as Lily is suggesting. Yes. The, the, the <laughs> senator, the young, the adolescent senator of Kericho, a student leader, of Kericho, of a university elected, brought in by um, people who want to use him. He has said something that ICC can actually grab him today. Do you know what he said? Put that video. 
if you have it, put it for everybody to see. Senator Keriot has said something very bad in Kenya. Mm -hmm. This is what sparked a conflict in South Sudan. Those type of sentiments are not the sentiments you can say today especially in Kenya. In, especially in public. He said we are the people we know we don't throw stones. We, when we decide, we make the whole country come to a standstill. Oh, ICC is still open. Yes. And, ben, ben and you know these people, the leaders of these guys are watching. They don't know that ICC did not complete the job. It's an open-ended case. His Excellency Dr. William Ruto is watching this boy make these comments. In his backyard, I'm telling you, me, I'm honest. I have traveled too much on this plane. I also need to rest. These such comments can spark a very big thing in this country. And even just, just to think about people who were affected in 2007, 2008 mayhem. Others have not even healed. You got that comment from, we talk about it tomorrow. Others have not even healed from that. People incident. are not healed. Mm -hmm. South Sudan needs that, those prayers. Mm -hmm. Let's add our voices. Let's pray for this country. Yes, let, let's, let's pray for President Salvaki. Let's pray for the leader of opposition that to 14 days as the clock ticks on South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> like we said here, we'll be keeping a countdown. Yes, we yes. keep a countdown from now. Yes, we are invested. In fact, tomorrow, uh, yes. our, 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 our shows, yes. 11 o'clock. Something we shall we tonight. shall have yes. a countdown. Yes. Our pro, our engineers, please uh -huh. draw the countdown. Yes. Fourteen days. Tomorrow will be thirteen That's to go. You. Yes. Can you put my photographs or our photographs? Mm -hmm. Thirteen days to go in South Sudan, like the one we did on Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Thirteen go days to go. To November 12th, South Sudan peace process. Put the photographs. Let them go worldwide. That's the only role we can play to help President Salovaki. To put pressure. To put pressure. Okay, our, our pressure is very soft, but we are speaking on behalf of South Sudanese. And I'm happy that uh, South Sudans are here and they're really open and they're, they're very uh, quite engaged. And uh, you can tell all they want is to return home for those who are abroad because the majority of the people who write to us from South Sudan are actually not even in the country. Uh, those are the numbers that you read here. 2.3 million people who have fled the country and are now living across uh, across the world. Sa and, mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Adwo Kalonghe is saying that the peace is a process. Uh, did those processes done right? We need peace today before tomorrow. Like it's even already late. Uh, Amel Beck is saying, Abam is saying, truly the South Sudanese make their tribes above South Sudan <laughs> itself as a country. <laughs> but we think we should know is tribes can't give us anything, but South Sudan name the name can, can give us something. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's very thank you, Beth. Thank you, Lily. Patriotism Lily. and Amel. Patriotism. Amel Lily, Amel. younger girl, my dear <laughs> sister. Thank you very much. Yes. We cry together with you. Mm -hmm. We stay together with you. Mm -hmm. 13 <laughs> days left. What, what Lily here is saying something very interesting. She's saying that you don't focus on those comments. We are allergic to the truth. <coughs> Are, aren't we all a lot of African countries? We just love burying our heads in the Thank sun. you very much. <laughs> yes, we but bury. We, but we still have to speak it. You know, you yes. know, I am the most hated man on the platform of social media because I speak the truth. Stephen, there we are. We've gone back to 2014. You see that? Now it is the time not to give up. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to press for peace in South Sudan. Now is the time to give the courage, the impetus, the strength to President Salva Key to push on, to put people together. Mm -hmm. Together. This is the time. We are not giving up. 
No, we are not. And uh, Agot Awan, very nice to see you, uh, brother. Thank you so much for writing your saying. November 12th, 2019 is the deadline and no return. Uh, Dr. Matsanga, I want you to know this piece was an African's piece and will be implemented as purely an African continent without West or East weights. Well, the West are already making resolution in their own Senate, in case you, you're wondering. The U.S. Senate resolution of South Sudan was made last week on Tuesday. That is the 22nd of October, 2019. And also, uh, you know, uh, UK came in yesterday and uh, is asking the citizens, the Britons in South Sudan, to leave while they're still can. And I found that statement a bit disturbing for me. And I, I've been wondering, what is it that the British knows will be happening in South Sudan that the rest of us don't know? But uh, there we are. So if we can find peace here in Africa and have our own solutions to our own problem, good for us. If we can avoid egoism, mm -hmm. if we can avoid chest bumping, if we can avoid for the sake of these younger men mm -hmm. who suffer in the streets of Africa, in London, in Washington, every corner of the world where you go, for the sake of them having peace, for the suffering of the people in the forest, in the bushes, in the savannas of South Sudan, the humanitarian catastrophe that we see can end. If we can put aside the egoism, if we can look at South Sudan, if we can stop George Kurune from writing useless reports that only endanger and bring more conflict than solving the conflict. Mm -hmm. If Africa can stand up through AU and say enough is enough, mm -hmm. no more conflicts in Africa. But also, Doctor, on the flip side, if uh, the, the leadership of South Sudan and the people who the stakeholders then South Sudan could look at uh, the report by George Clooney and see the report that really details how other people also, they are the ones who are benefiting from the chaos in South Sudan and see actually South Sudan stands to lose as it continues like this. So if they could look at it like that and decide to just sober up for a moment and uh, look at, uh, you know, the, the loss of South Sudan is the gain by other people, out, other players out there who really don't care about uh, the country of South Sudan or the people of South Sudan. If they they could take that report and just use it to, to, to bring peace in that country and stability, it will be good for them. The, the worst part of this report mm -hmm. is of George Clooney and the pedagogist is that they wait when the people have died. Why didn't they make the report much earlier? We needed this report mm -hmm. much earlier. Now they are seeing the end tale of this arrangement of 12 of November and they release a report which adds more agony to the people of South Sudan. We need these reports to be made daily. Mm -hmm. These reports must be there, but not wait. Come and fly in, make reports, fly out, create problems, create difficulties mm -hmm. for the same people who have suffered for all this time. So we should not just sit there and watch as things are happening that are not okay, and then come out and make a report that it will be too late for, for anybody to do anything about. We need the peace. Mm -hmm. We need the peace in South Sudan. There is no shortcut mm -hmm. to peace. Oh, no, there's no two ways. We call upon Dr. Yak Macha. Mm -hmm. This time, I have sacrificed myself to fly together with him from Khartoum for this maiden flight. Mm -hmm. To arrive in Juba together. After all, he took me to Museven when I did not like to go. By force. But so here we are. Let's get the truth. Let this young man have peace. Yes, indeed. Let this young man go back to their country mm -hmm. and sit and enjoy the good sunshine. The it's flow a, of river it's, Nile. A, it's a beautiful country. A beautiful country. Sometimes earlier this year, I saw an advertisement by a Sudan's government on CNN, come, come invest in South Sudan. And I think you're not agreeing. You're wondering, why are they even advice, advertising on CNN? But it's a beautiful country. They, we are able to see a part of South Sudan that we don't see. And we want the peace to return so that we can see the beauty of South Sudan that we really don't get to see. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't get to see in, in South Sudan. And one of our viewers here, Galdino Sebet, is saying the root causes of the conflict must must be understood before any resolution can be applied. And uh, he's saying formation of government is not the end game. Yes, indeed. And uh, as Doctor, you've been saying here, it's like when they were drafting some of this in the peace agreement, it's like they started it upside down. They did not start with the right Yes, supposed to start and I told you. The root cause. And, uh, you, you, you can't see in the United States, 
Senate resolution. Senate, Senate resolution yeah. They have gone, they have touched on what I've been telling South Sudanese mm. that they will not, you cannot make peace without accountability. It has to be there. There must be accountability. And the sticking point here, yes. why to kill us, mm -hmm. to, def to, de to destroy, to destroy mm -hmm. the, the, what Igad has been doing. Mm -hmm. Because they are now poking holes in what Igad did. So they're rubbishing every, every, yes, every, every game. Yes, that's exactly what they are saying. Every game they are every simply game. saying, mm -hmm. you did not do it very well. Because you left one aspect mm -hmm. of accountability. Now, the, the, the point that we must emphasize here is accountability is the most important thing in a peace process. Mm -hmm. But we must give, empower the government of South Sudan, mm -hmm. the remaining structures to be able to do accountability. And this accountability, Dr. Matsang, I've always wondered, what, will it, what should it look like, accountability that will really serve justice to the country and the people of South Sudan? What should it look like? The type of accountability that we did in, in northern Uganda is, is alternative mechanisms. Alternative mechanisms of, of justice. We used African alternative mechanisms. We changed our course. We used cultural institutions. We did multiple reparations restitution of communities. We agreed. We reconciled. We accepted the mistakes. And the people said, yes, I killed so many people. I buried them there. I raped your wife. I've come back. We paid cows. People paid what they can. Those who didn't have promised it with a yes. I am I'm sorry. That is the accountability we are looking for. And that is what is needed. And that's why you see our detractors, African detractors, those who don't like Africa, they have rushed so quickly to condemn us. They have caught us on a very serious point. We did not eagerly did something and left something. So they have come in now that whereas this was done, yes. you forgot. Mm -hmm. You summarized it so well. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. viewers. Yes, yes. And one, one also of the demands of the, of the U.S. Senate resolution. One of the points they are saying uh, South Sudan uh, should immediately release all political prisoners and fulfill their responsibility uh, to protect civilians. And yes, so all the political prisoners, uh, Mr. Salva Kiir. Uh, they're supposed to be released. Uh, so I don't know. Of course, uh, being that the United States uh, is one of the countries uh, that has been, you know, uh, the donor funding and things like that, and has a lot of influence in the UN and uh, the, do the money that is coming to South, Sud uh, to South Sudan. So this is something that uh, South Sudan leadership should take very seriously. And if they don't, as the U.S. say, you know, if if the 12th uh, November does not happen, South Sudan faces uh, numerous sanctions that could be uh, fresh sanctions against the country, and that is the last thing uh, South Sudan needs right now. So they should take this report very seriously. Indeed, that is exactly our point. And Lawrence, Lily Lawrence Moby, <laughs> you raised the point. Mm -hmm. That's the point you can ask Museven himself. I am not the spokesman of President Museven, neither do I have I ever pretended to speak on behalf of the government of Uganda. You have got the embassy in Juba and the embassy in every street of the world where you are. Uganda has almost embassies in most of the Af Af countries in the world. So you could walk in one of the embassies and try to ask them why Uganda is supplying troops. So for me on this program, I wouldn't like to get involved in who the troops are. At the moment, I am more organized and more focused in making
making sure peace returns to northern to to southern Sudan and the peace grows stronger and stronger president Museveni can be asked i am not a spokesman a spokesman is called mr opondo a very younger man there who, who, who lost his grounds and he, he was a member of upc and now he's a very 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 arguable spokesperson of the, 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 the government of republic of uganda office of the president yes okay. so for me i am an ordinary citizen who feels for the people of south sudan and as a global citizen and an east african i i must loud and i must give support to my fellow africans who need this peace so well and also lily just you're just confirming part of the report i said you were saying people other countries are actually benefiting from this chaos in south sudan so until this leadership of south sudan comes together and realizes it's the country that is losing it's the people of south sudan that is losing and everybody there when they are coming right now they're coming with their own interest and uh, they're helping yes but there are also other things that so it has to come the will to want peace and to want to have a stable country must come from the leadership of south sudan otherwise this will continue continue being a losing battle for the people of South Sudan. Thank you very much. It's 26 minutes past nine. We want to leave you with the greatest, greatest sense of humor mm -hmm. that beneath any conflict, there is always joy. Mm -hmm. In any conflict, there is always joy. At the end of the tunnel. Yes. Okay. And don't give up. We ask President Uhuru Mwingai Kenyatta of Kenya, the Foreign Minister of Kenya, to continue to pursue mm -hmm. a peaceful resolution to this conflict. Mm -hmm. Where they need help from us, some of us who know Dr. Yakamacha. He will not refuse to talk to me because what I'm talking here is what is on the ground. I will go and tell him the truth. If he wants to come, me to accompany him mm -hmm. in Juba, I will, to Juba on that day, the clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to do so. After all, I've gone through so many bad things than this one. The tunnel is opening up. Oliver Femer, mm -hmm. that turn of hope. Mm -hmm. We must keep hoping, otherwise what we have we as, lose. as human beings, yes. Even up to today, we still hope Jesus could return. He will, but South Sudan has to find peace first. <laughs> Kom Magok says, in the involvement of President Seven in our country affairs is a cause of all the suffering of our people. But if the people themselves don't speak about it, mm -hmm. then it becomes a bad behavior. It is important for Sudanese to speak about it. And you better start speaking about it. And as I've told you, if there is any question that concerns President Museveni's involvement in South Sudan, his spokesmen and embassies are open. You can ask him. For me, I'm speaking as an African. A Pan African who wants peace in South Sudan. <laughs> okay, all right. So we. we thank he says, "Why our friend Agot <laughs> always stand with the government?" Our friend Agot. Where is Agot? Agot somewhere up there. Agot Awan. He's saying, "Dr. Matanga, uh, what have you learned from 1945, 1980s between the Cold War era?" But there's something not that common. There's something he said up there, and I think he's he's, uh, he's in support of the government and. Uh, uh, he's saying that, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the government... Oh, there's something he had suggested, I think, that is uh, it's, uh, angering some um, members here from South Sudan, uh, that uh, if Dr. Mashar does not return, then President Salva Kiri should take Dr. Mashar's wife and make her the vice president. Are you trying to break her home? <laughs> that cannot really happen. Uh, wife to uh, Dr. Mashar to be made the vice president of South Sudan. Now, <laughs> a god, a god is always like that. Is is a very which wife, Doctor Yakamacha's wife, is also in Khartoum, 
So she's he's saying that she should be the one coming back. Yeah, so which, uh, yeah, I don't know. But this is a serious matter of God. Don't bring, people are dying there in the forest. <laughs> they need food and you are bringing in such a thing. But it's okay. It's a sense of humor at the tunnel. Yes, at the, at the end of that tunnel. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. Adok, along, you're saying, Doctor, if uh, Kir want peace in South Sudan, when he does not solve the standing issue such as security, construction, and issue of 10 states, uh, those are the root causes here. Yeah, the states and security of Dr. Mashar, uh, should he return? And remember, he had demanded for 3,000 uh, security to be given to him uh, for him to feel safe. And on the backdrop of what happened in 2016, he has, like, his, his, his concern is legitimate. We can't dismiss that. So, uh, but uh, Salva Kiir, and I keep saying here, and we really want, because he's the president of South Sudan, so he has the responsibility. But he has not come out very, very clearly and to assure Dr. Mashar of his uh, security when he returns to Juba. So that could be another contention. Is another con is contention already. Thank you very much, viewers. Thank you very much. Wherever you are in the world, thank you very much. We return next Tuesday at 8 p.m. with maybe a countdown. A countdown. Yeah. Yes, a countdown. We might have it between few, now and the next week. We yes, know, maybe, seven days. Maybe Juba we might have, have seven days. Michelle maybe good returned. news would have come. So we need to update our viewers. Yes, yes. And we want to thank all of you who have just been watching us. This tele television is one of the televisions that talks, talks and talks, and talks about Africa. Yes. It never tires. It never gets tired. Mm -hmm. We always talk until we shall talk. Mm -hmm. Across the bridge, there is no more sorrow. <laughs> across the tunnel. I think <laughs> the, across the, the tunnel, the there is the tunnel. no more sorrow. Okay, and we need uh, the bridge that leads. Museven didn't come by himself. He came because the leaders are not able to run our country politically. Oh my God! Keep those comments working and uh, see our show how how brilliant it was. Those who missed it, send it to any of the leaders. Send it to Riak. Send it to President Salubaki. And send it to those leaders who are in the hotels in Nairobi mm -hmm. for them to be able to see that there are people out there crying for Sudan. Mm -hmm. South Sudan. So some of them are here in Nairobi living, yes. living large. Oh my God, they are eating lunch here. Living large. Yes, they live large. Mm -hmm. I can see our friend has arrived. Sure. Across the bridge. Don't Can like. you put that picture there? 13 days to go for South Sudan. Ah, you have forgotten South Sudan. Whoa. Put it South Sudan. 13 days to go. <laughs> and send it quickly before we finish so that they can take this tag. We want this tag to spread all over the whole world. 13 days to go. So every day we shall remove Kaka. Mm -hmm. Kaka, one, one. Mm -hmm. We are counting on Ria Kamacha. We will be counting. We are counting on Dr. Mm -hmm. Geno Salvaki. Mm -hmm. hey, hey. Why? Mr. Clark has come in. Where was he? As the clock ticks, doctor. Be clean and clear. Have you ever received the pocket money from South Sudan? <laughs> no! They don't. They can't even give me. You know that very well. John Clark, <laughs> you don't want scandal. John there. Clark, <laughs> you have even made one of the worst mi mistakes tonight. You've made my day. Okay, Where have you been, South, my friend? South Sudan needs to pay civil servants first before they. Can they need to pay it. civil servants. <laughs> I am just talking about the peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or it's the other accident. time, mm -hmm. South Sudan government said, Riyak, "I am right. I'm Doctor Riyaka's friend." All what I did was to make Dr. Riyak Macha be released from South Africa. And I picked a phone and I called Zulu Lindiwe, who called Muse Zuma, myself. And then the Minister of Foreign Affairs, she's a lady who, who likes me so much because I talk about ICC and I hate ICC. And I said, You have now imprisoned one leader 
of the peace process. How will the peace process grow in South Sudan? You cannot. So they brought him closer. They brought him closer Cartoon. to finish the problem. And affordness, Bashir also, Had his own Dr. Issues. Yaka Machia himself mm -hmm. has come. Hey, I am telling you, you the, Dr. Yaka Machia is here. Dr. Yaka Machia says, do you believe is AU, that AU is doing the right things for people of South Sudan or they are just doing business as usual? Mm -hmm. is, but is, is this Dr. Riyak Machar or this is just Riyak Machar? I don't know. Riyak Machar is a name in South Sudan. I, I mean, for me, AU yes. has never impressed me. Mm -hmm. There is a tall gentleman called Musa Faki. I, I, I have no, you know what? I don't have any respect. Good, word, good words for Mr. No Fahey. good words. So don't spoil my evening. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep with agony. But also something, uh, there's a, a point on over as we finish, we are, we are concluding. We conclude about three, four times, but uh, the last time. Uh, there's a point there one of our viewers raised there and said the reason why uh, maybe some other uh, rebels are being hosted in other countries, somebody like um, uh, Thomas Cirillo, and we remember during last year's the signing of the, the peace pact last year in September, he was not part of the people who were included. So these are people who felt they should be stakeholders in this, but they have been left uh, out. Just put South Sudan, mm -hmm. put South Sudan in the capital letters in the, in the middle there, mm -hmm. South Sudan, then you say how many days left? They leave it as it is. And they put South Sudan in white so that they know which country we are talking about. Mr. 13 days left with hopeful bring a God. Hallelujah. I'm leaving you and what is called a caption. Caption wording. All right. We sleep near self. Our hearts are near. Miriam and myself, our hearts are near. South Sudan, especially mm. mine. Very, they are bleeding. It's, it's very, so as I was saying, so last year, um, somebody like Thomas Cirillo was not included in that and he refused to be part of that and he was not included and he did not sign in. But this time around, after the president and Salva Kid met, when uh, Salva Kid traveled, uh, when Mashar traveled to Juba, the last meeting they had, uh, you know, uh, they realize it's important to bring somebody like uh, Thomas Cirillo back to the table and other players because it was important for all these groups to come together so that they can realize a peaceful South Sudan. So I'm addressing one of the concerns by our viewers there who brought up the matter of uh, Thomas Cirillo. So they said they will reach out to him. I hope they have done that because that is the only way they can realize a truly united uh, South Sudan. I think... Hey, people are now releasing very hard things here. Mm -hmm. Hey, 13 days left with. Hey, yeah, yeah. People are getting done a bit. People are releasing statements here. Have mm -hmm. you seen them? Some we are waiting all the way from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want to see that. Leave that caption on the floor. And then you drop even a medium one. Is it? No, it's fine. Mine will come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, so it's there. Bring mine. Yes. Let it go. My, mine can wait. Watch it. If watch a motto. Yes. I did that. In Zimbabwe is all over. By the way, mm -hmm. Thursday is Zimbabwe. Let's look at it deeper. Of the punch. Yeah, mm -hmm. of the punch. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe. By then, they would have organized their man. Their, there's something wrong there. But uh, when they organized the protest and the U.S. went ahead and just pointed them at the face by also now giving a fresh ban on the ministry of the uh, minister of security there. I mean, but the embassy of America has become. I I, I think African leaders should think of imposing should visa fee, <laughs> not sanctions, but visa. No fee. visa fee. Okay. Visa fee. We are waiting for that uh, caption and we go. You are holding us around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Riyak Mashari is saying, why is it so difficult for IGAD to tell President Kiel to implement the peace agreement that he signed in 2018? IGAD, I think, held a meeting uh, in Juba there 
uh, not last Friday, but the other one in regards to that matter, just before the United Nations Security Council, uh, you know, delegation visited South Sudan there. And, uh, you know, maybe they're not pushing too hard, but, you know, uh, what I think they're doing whatever they can uh, with whatever they have. But also you have to realize Truth be told, the other interest in the EGAD state members that you know could are playing also a role uh, in fueling this war that is in South Sudan. So that also we must always have in mind the different state members in EGAD. So that uh, you know, so EGAD, uh, if, uh, if you ask me, might not have been the right. It's not the right. Uh, you know, body to truly bring peace in South Sudan. So perhaps AU and uh, AU has been very standoffish uh, when it comes to matters South Sudan. So uh, there is uh, that is where we are today. So we're waiting for that. We have a request here. Oliver Femer mm -hmm. says, Doctor, can you punch the recent approval program in Kenya in one of your shows later on? Yeah. In fact, I think Miriam will jump over the floor. Why? Do you want the polygamy? It's not for me. You told me. No, it's not for me, but there are other people who are okay with you it. You told and I have me. No problem. You told me here. I don't over, share. Over. Mm. Eh? Don't do that. So it is a good. No, it's not for why me. Why don't we? I will not talk it? about it. It's not for me, but there are other people who are okay with it, and I, I respect that. It's just not my cup of tea, and I am a tea talker. Wow. So. <laughs> You have, Oliver, have you seen what you have triggered now? No, I'm not cup of tea. This is not my cup of tea, honey. We, uh -huh. we are not doing that. Not cup of tea. <laughs> she can't share. No. Mm -mm. Oh. What about if you find yourself in Saudi Arabia? I will not find myself in Saudi Arabia. I hope not. Unless I'm going there to tour. You know the world. Are we still in the same area when we started in January? The world moves. Yeah. You might be somewhere. Nah, the Kenya is moving. Kenya is not being left behind. So stop it. <laughs> stop it. Yo, the, the photo is taking a No. And I'm being taken. So there is this uh, theory where people say the world rotates. Yeah. What rotates? Is it the sun or the world? Or the earth? The earth. Rotates, no, it is the sun that rotates around the earth. The earth? The sun is, is stagnant. stagnant, yes. So what rotates? The earth rotates in its own axis. The rotation of the earth. There you are. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, Miriam will find her so, self in no, no, no. While, Saudi while, Arabia while or world, Iraq. While, while the world is rotating, Kenya is also rotating. So, I'm, 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 I'm so you stay, you are, you are like the, the, the restaurant in Singapore. I'd rather just jump to South Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> rather than <laughs> Miriam has shown, Miriam has shown a lot of interest of South Sudan yes, of late. It's very close to my heart. Why? Together with Biafra and, and Amazonia, but you know, South Sudan is very close. Because where I grew up in here, we had a lot of neighbors who were from South Sudan. So I have a very personal relationship with the people of South Sudan. And we could hear stories from, you know, the people who were going through the difficult times there. So that's why. <laughs> yes, very close here. Yeah. Yeah. We are waiting for you, Stephen, and uh, Sam, that people choose who has money to feed more than one useless thieves. Hey, Oliver, Femme, why made it a law? Yeah, yeah. You are welcome, Miriam. What? Yes, I'd rather go to South Sudan than Saudi Arabia. Nothing bad against Saudi Arabia, but I don't think I would. I, would, I, would, I, be, I, I, they, they, I would be okay. I don't know where Flores has gone. You should also <laughs> welcome me to South Sudan. Uh, yes. But you should go and no, you should go to Juba, no, to Khartoum and get, get your friend to South Sudan. Get my child to South Sudan. Yeah. Force him there as he forced you to. to I Uganda. will talk to Dr. Mokuta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mokuta is there. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to him to, to connect me to Geno Duglo. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. But remark. Mark my words, Riak and Silver V never sit together. Again. And this time, those two men are beginning to be afraid of themselves alone. They have personal issues. Yeah. They're not fighting for country issues, believe me. That is very true. And uh, John Clare. <laughs> oh my God. Have you seen what Clark has said? It's, it's John Clark. Hi, nice to John see you. John Clark, Miriam. 
Have you read that? Read it quietly. No, read it. I read it quietly. <laughs> <laughs> As I said. <laughs> that after, yeah. after for dinner tonight. Yes, there we, there we go. So that, uh, 30 days Johnny to Clark, go. today you came in a different organ- setup, man. There, there is the poster. There is the poster. Mm-hmm. 13 days to go. Still the implementation of South Sudan deal. Just count it. Mm-hmm. Continue counting, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. That is me. That is my photograph. That is my asking. May God help us. May God help Africa. God bless us. Miriam, over to you. Close it. <laughs> So we want to thank you so much, our viewers, and we want to thank you for engaging with us and the people of South Sudan and everybody else across the world who is uh, worried and who has concern over this country that we love dearly. And we just uh, will continue talking about it. Somebody there says, enough of the talking. We need action. We, we know the action lies with the leadership of South Sudan. All we can do is just continue bringing awareness and talking about matters, South Sudan, and indeed other matters across Africa uh, that uh, requires us, our attention and so thank you so much and hopefully tomorrow we can meet here 11 a.m. East African time for another edition of Good Morning Africa where I'll be bringing you together with Dr. Matsanga. You, you are know, going to pick up Dr. Ria Kamatia uh, in The latest uh, across Africa. And before the deadline 12 of November. Okay, this man now, uh, now they want me to go there. I'm in chaos myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I will go. All right, so we, we see them tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. Keep that flag. Go on de- removing one day by day. Mambo uh-huh. itawonekana. Yeah. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Good night. I, I gave you time to finish. You can- Let's finish calmly. <laughs> Thank you very much, viewers, wherever you are. Yes. Thank you for watching us. You have been watching Punchline Africa TV, Diplomatic Leaks. We have, for the last one and a half hours, we have been battling to expose, to help, to encourage the people of South Sudan to come together to achieve a unit of purpose and bring peace to their own country. Sudan pains us. Sudan is at our hearts. Sudan is a sister state in Africa. Therefore, for those whose prayers can be heard, and for us who can continue to pray as we have prayed before, pray for peace to return to South Sudan. We have done our part as journalists who have talked about all the things that have happened. Remember, the big brothers are watching us. We don't know what they want to do. But whatever they want to do, as long as it helps the people of South Sudan to achieve peace, so be it. On behalf of Panchala in Africa, television station, behalf of the producers, the production team, the researchers, and anybody, all of those who did every logistics, the video men, camera men, my co-anchor, Miriam Ogut, thank you very much. Your heart lies near South Sudan. Mm-hmm. Mine lies in South Sudan. Why are you removing mine in South Sudan? Hers lies together with me in South Sudan. Why are you replacing my heart? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. This station, therefore, is for Africa, with Africa, by Africa, Charles.
must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.